Hello everyone, A.R. Bernard here, excited about today. I have an incredible man, father, husband, and teacher. You'll be surprised how much knowledge this brother can drop. He has come a long way, and um, I cannot tell you, Wendy Lane, how glad I am that he's consented to be a part of this conversation. It's Denzel Washington. So he's going to be joining me. Wow, there he is already. That was quick. That was quick. How are you, how are my you? brother? Excellent, excellent. How are you? I'm glad to hear that. And let me say thank you to Malcolm. I've got to give Malcolm a shout out for jumping right in and helping us out here. Malcolm, you're how you on doing? the money, brother. <laughs> thank on you. the money. Now, you know, the, the real boss is standing over here. As soon as I mention her name, she starts running now. Uh-oh, uh-oh. I really want to thank you for taking the time to just have this conversation. There's so much going on in our world, in our country, and I couldn't help but reflect back on your role in a very important film, and that is the Malcolm X movie that you did with Spike Lee. You and I and Pauletta, your wife, and Karen, my wife, we had lunch, and we had talked a little about, about what you went through in that particular movie, but the movie speaks to the times of the late 50s, 60s, and the social issues. The 60s was a decade of every revolution imaginable going on in America. So what, what did you go through to prepare for that role as Malcolm X? Oh, wow. Um, um, actually, you know, I, I, I did a play about Malcolm X called When the Chickens Came Home to Roost in 1981. And that's when I realized that I could play the part, first of all, that uh, we got a lot of attention for it and that, that, that it was something I could do. So going into the film, I uh, felt like I, I could, you know, play the part. But in terms of preparation, we, we don't have that much time to, <laughs> to tell you everything that I went through be, because it's uh, it, it was a year or two year process. So it took you two years to prepare for that. And I'm thinking now we can't cover all of that, but uh, I mean, you had to look at the historical context of, of, of Malcolm from the time he was Malcolm Little to the time that he came, became Malcolm X, the nation of Islam. Uh, what, what historically did you have to do to prepare your thinking uh, about that context? More importantly, I worked from the inside out. I didn't worry about the historical context. I didn't, my focus wasn't on the, the things that you would see me do or, or, or what one might perceive of, 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 of the film or my performance. My, my concern was, was the inside, making sure I had the right spirit and, uh, and that, that, was, that I was going to be about God's business, not just, uh, not just Malcolm X's business. So for you, any role that you play is about representing your faith, your Christocentric faith. Uh, but here you are portraying an individual who was searching. He was looking. And, you know, from what I understand about his history, he, he didn't really land anywhere. The Nation of Islam was part of his journey of faith. Um, so you got into the person, the inner workings of this man so that you could portray him, you know, in a very powerful way. And you did. It's absolutely amazing. I had cannot tell you how many white pastors and associates of mine in a conversation about the film told me how much it meant to them because it helped them understand. It helped them experience the pain. It helped put things in context. Uh, I had the, the privilege of working with uh, Professor C. Eric Lincoln, who wrote the book, the definitive work on the Nation of Islam, uh, called The Black Muslim Movement in, in America. And for so many people, black, white, uh, any class, any culture, it, it spoke volumes. What, what was it about the character's journey, Malcolm's journey, that spoke to me or yes yeah well you know it's a, it's a, it's it's 
it, it's not a journey we all go through, but it, it's representative of, of, of a, a journey that we, we go through. I mean, he was affected by his past, what happened to his father, what happened to his mother, what it turned him into. And uh, not to compare him to uh, Paul, but he had a, a moment when he was knocked. He had a supernatural, if you will, spiritual moment where he, he, he uh, was committed to, to, to the Honorable Elijah Muhammad and, 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 and to that teaching. And, you know, his life and, and death stands as an example uh, for, for a lot of us. It spoke to me specifically, you know, when I did the play. And, and I didn't really know that much about Malcolm X, to be honest with you. I, before doing the play in 1981, I, I hadn't read the autobiography of Malcolm X. In fact, I, I actually said, who's this Elijah guy that he keeps, <laughs> he keeps talking about? This? I didn't even realize the man's name was Elijah. So, <laughs> so I was coming from zero, uh, uh, which was a good thing. I was an open vessel. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I could see that because you come with a blank slate, right. no no colored lens, open right. to learn and, and to experience. Uh, Malcolm ends up you know, at in attention with the nation, and you know, I'm I'm I, I was part of the old school of the nation before Farrakhan really came into a position of of somewhat power because the media is what really blew Mr. Farrakhan up. Uh, but prior to that, he was not as prominent as the public. You know, the media would like you uh, like you to think. Uh, so when you when you think about the nation from your Christian exper uh, experience, your your Christian faith, uh, was it a religion, a religious experience, or was it more so an organization that reacted in protest to the failure of the white Christian church in America to address the socioeconomic plight of blacks in this country? Well, my answer to that is sort of based on what I learned once I learned as in my youth i had no you know martin luther king was in our house not not malcolm x <laughs> was a minister in the church of god in christ so it wasn't even brought up i didn't even know who he was or or or, or anything about that so in, in my youth it wasn't a, it wasn't a question and 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 really until i was introduced to the autobiography of malcolm x which which to this day is one of my favorite books and and you know, I learned so much about what he had gone through, and, and uh, it, it wasn't until that time that there was a change. So in your house, it was Dr. King. See, it, in Period. my neighborhood, in Benson, Saracen, Bushwick, Brooklyn, we had those two icons. We had Dr. King. We had Malcolm. Dr. King, for us, was weak and didn't understand the need to overthrow the system. Right. Malcolm got it. You know, we, we were too young. To, and too naive to appreciate the power of, of the nonviolent non action that Dr. King was talking about and how he wanted to appeal to the conscience of America. Malcolm was saying, take up arms, let's get on with this, and right. that was the circle of it. And, right. and, and we, we really had to choose because we had, we had two sides. The, 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 the boys who went to church, because I didn't, <laughs> you know, they kind of were exposed to Dr. King Right. And their parents said, this is the man, this is the icon, but with us, with Malcolm. So it was those two icons predominantly. But today, it's, 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 it's different. There's, there's, there's a, seems to be a blend of, of nonviolent protest and at the same time, the call for civil disobedience and, 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 and action and, and protest. To you, you look at what's happening today. What's the difference between the 60s and now? It, it, too many options. You know, in the information age, you have as many options as you have leaders. You have as many leaders as you do opinions. You know, so it, 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 who are the chief and who are the Indians? So, I, and that's by intent, because you take Black Lives Matters. Uh, I, I interviewed D. Ray McKesson, who was one of the founders uh, on my radio show. And when... Eric Garner, that case came out, you know, the chokehold situation here in Staten Island, uh, and it was an uproar. When the mayor of New York City, Bill de Blasio, met with Black Lives Matter, he was meeting with 15 different organizations under that one banner. Right. So in the millennial mind, they don't want a, a, a leader, a messianic figure to emerge like a Malcolm or like a Dr. King. 
they want it to be spread out. But the reality is there's no structure to that. And, and people become confused as to what the exact message is, you know? Yeah, I agree. I agree. So you mean, what should we do about that? Or? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, look, you know what? You're, you're being modest because you're a man that you, we've had conversations over time and you're very insightful. You're sensitive to what's going on. You're, you're very modest about it. You just do what you do. And I remember you gave me a hard time because I want to talk about all the things you do. And for you, it's just doing the work and, and, and letting other people, which is biblical, let other people speak of that. But, but you're, you're sensitized to, to what's happening and how you see it. And I don't want to pull you into a political conversation, uh, but I, I'm sure that there's something different about what's going on now as opposed to what was going on back in the 60s. What do you see as different? Well, I'm 65, not, not 15. You know, that's different. Uh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm looking at it from a, a different perspective. Uh, some of the underlying issues obviously are still the same. Uh, the platforms that, that young people or people have now to express their opinions are obviously, uh, uh, there's so, so many more of them and, and, and there's so much more of an opportunity. In, in, in a sense, Martin Luther King's, a part of Martin Luther King's dream has come true. You, you know, he talked about young black boys, I forgot the quote exactly, young black people, black and whites walking in. Well, that's actually the case. Mm -hmm. They are walking mm -hmm. hand in hand. They are walking down the streets by the thousands, tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands. They are not yet singing free at last, free at last, thank God Almighty, I'm free at last, because they're not. But they are together. Uh, so he was and is a prophet. It, it is changing. We are in the middle of it. Where it's going to go, we will see, you know, but this is where we are now. And I'm empowered and inspired by the uh, young people, black, white, male or female. Wow, you know, it, it, it's interesting. I hear more and more high-profile people who are in our age range saying the same thing, that the young people are driving, they're happy to be in the, in, in the back seat and kind of share some wisdom with them as they supply the fervor and the passion. I want to refer back to... And, and not just, not Go just ahead. the back seat, you know, uh, uh, because when, when, when it's all said and done, you know, what are the programs? Uh, moving forward, uh, uh, you know, where, where, how do we activate what we've talked about and, and expressed our feelings about and complained about and protest about? You know, what, how do we, where's the development, to quote someone? Uh, I know. <laughs> fast <laughs> one, one of the six approaches, yeah. Yeah, yeah what, what, yeah. what were the six? Uh, 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 well, you got prayer, you got advocacy, prayer, you got advocacy, activism, protest. we've got protests, we've got convening and development. Oh, convening. Oh, okay. I left that one out. And development. Yeah. So when, yeah. when it's all said and done, what, what are we going to do? You know, how do we activate it? What, what's the plan? Now, referring back to the film, because of the time it was in your life, you personally were facing uh, some issues at the time that you were making the film, right? Because I believe it's your, your dad passed at the time. Uh, yeah. My, my father passed away during that time. Uh, we, uh, experienced some of the things, I guess, that uh, uh, Malcolm X and some of them had to go through, you know, with a tremendous amount of death threats. And, you know, it was the first time I had security around the clock and all those kind of things. Why is that? Your, your father's a preacher. People, some people may not know your father was a, a pastor, correct? Right. Or right. You said, why, why is that? What now? Why is it? Uh, yeah. Well, why was that kind of thing happening with him? Why was what kind of thing happening? With him? Yeah, with your father. All right. At the time of his passing, you were you were making the film, right? right. Was that a critical loss? What 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 was the kind of relationship that you had with your dad? Well, and it, it, he he was he was he it had a massive stroke, so he was alive but not living for mm. you know, a, a long period of time during that time. So we were, uh, uh, and I don't have my dates exactly right, but we were more or less keeping him alive uh you know the, the the doctors were in fact i i i pulled the plug uh, uh, uh was asked you know to, to pull the plug on my father so i did wow wow that's you 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 say that but i don't think it was that easy 
Uh, well, it's not anything I've talked about. Decision. I haven't talked about it probably until this point. Not, never, never publicly, but it's, it's not. I mean, that's just the way it was. Wow, wow, wow. What, what did he do for your life? I mean, what, how did he inform who you are as a person? How did he shape who you are as a person? My father was a, a, a gentle man, a, a man of God, was saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost, <laughs> uh, a, a, a longstanding elder member of the church. And he was all spirit. I mean, he was all spirit. He'd speak in tongues at the drop of a hat and love to sing and love my wife, Pauletta. You know, <laughs> they would sing together and, and he, 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 Pauletta played the piano and he'd sing or he played the piano and sing. So he was just a, a really gentle uh, 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 human being. You gave your life to Christ at what age? Well, a couple of three times, you know. <laughs> you, you had to make sure. You had that. to make sure. Okay, oh, I, I, gave it. It, I gave it up. You know, early on, I was like, shoot, this is it. Then I was like, and this is, I'm laughing, but I was filled with the Holy Ghost, and it scared me. I said, well, wait a minute. I didn't want to go this deep. You know, mm. I didn't want to party, <laughs> you know. <laughs> so, in, in fact, in, in, in Bishop Blake's church, West Angeles Church of God in Christ, uh, in 1981 or 82, Robert Townsend. Took me yeah, to I went to yeah. church with Robert Townsend, and, and when it came time to come down to the altar, I said, you know, this time I'm just going to go down there and give it up and see what happens. And I went in the prayer room and gave it up and let go and experienced something I've never experienced in my life. And, and I, I remember calling my mother afterwards and asking her, I said, well, you know, it felt like I was going up in the air. And, and my cheeks were filled. And she said, oh, no, that's the devil you purging. I said, yeah, yeah, my <laughs> cheeks were filled. But it was, it was, it was, a, it was a, a supernatural, if not once in a lifetime experience, once in this lifetime experience, that I couldn't completely understand at the time. It's amazing how God will give you an indelible mark in terms of an experience that no matter how much you may stray away from or deviate from, you never forget that moment, the power of that moment. You and I, when we were at lunch, you were telling me like it happened to you the day before we went to lunch. Right. It was still so real and so powerful. And that kept you somewhat grounded as you were exposed to other things, correct? In spite of myself. It kept me grounded in spite of myself. I, I mean, I, I accepted it. I definitely experienced it, but I wasn't ready to live it. Ah, ah. I wasn't ready to live it. That was 90, I don't know how old I was then, but I wasn't ready to live it then. And, and I'm, I'm sure I'm not the only one who, obviously not the only one who's gone through that kind of experience. So, right. so, right. so I, had to, I had to go through all of that and, 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 and you know, I remember my mother saying to me, she says, you know, Denzel, you, you do a lot of good, but it's time for you to do good the right way. And she said, and you know what I'm talking about. And she said, you know, you can't buy your way into heaven. <laughs> Not that I was trying to, but I, I have, you know, I, I'm a giver. I always have been, helped build a lot of things. But I never forgot that. And I knew, you know, on my journey, and we all have our individual journeys, that I wasn't where I needed to be yet, but I knew I was on the right track. And and even before that day, you know, my own search through books like Sid Arthur, mm -hmm. you know, Herman Hesse affected me tremendously in, in my youth, and the Bible did. And, and so you 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 have that that moment that not from the horse moment, if you will, but it doesn't mean that the rest of your life is going to go the way it should you know it's not like oh i had this moment i'm filled with the holy spirit and everything's gonna be great yeah yeah be no, perfect no. And, oh boy and, and you know and you know this because i'm a witness the, I'm a witness, the next day i'm ready to save everybody yeah now, yeah you know, I'm, you know, I'm in charge of saving people you know yeah. So, I, I, I'm guilty. I'm guilty of a few spiritual muggings back in my early days myself. So yeah, I'm going to use that spiritual yeah. muggings. Because <laughs> for me, Jesus, well, you know, we church of God in Christ, and in those those days, for me, I got saved in the, in the mid seventies. You know, Jesus was coming back in two weeks, so right. it was about getting everybody saved because you wanted them to go to heaven with you. But then you realize, no, you've got a life to live out. 
and you have to deal with this tension between the the lower self that you're familiar with and the higher self in the image of God that the Holy Spirit is trying to bring you in conformity to. And that's not an easy task. You, you've had prophetic utterance over your life. Right. You're at a stage in your life where you've done so much, you've lived so much, incredibly successful man, as the world judges success, all right? But there was a prophetic word that was spoken over you, and you're kind of fulfilling that prophecy now. Tell us about that word. Uh, 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 Ruth Green was a, a, a woman who was known to have the gift of prophecy. She, she lived in Mount Vernon, where I grew up, and she was uh, 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 she, she came to, my, my mother did her hair. So she was in the beauty shop uh, when I was sitting in there, having been kicked out of school and uh, out of college. And she said that, she said, boy, you, she said, first of all, somebody give me a piece of paper. And she wrote down the word prophecy. And she misspelled it. And my mother wrote it down. And she just said that, you know, boy, you're going to travel the world and, and preach to millions of people. And I, I had a 1.7 grade point average. I flunked out of college. I'm like, well, I'm not even in school. I don't, you know, do you see anything in your crystal ball about me getting back to school? <laughs> I mean, that's the way I was looking at it then. Uh, when I look at it now, I have traveled the world. If, if, if you, you know, I don't even like to talk about it, but there, 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 there are speeches or things I've done online and there are millions of viewers that, that, mm -hmm. that you know, so, so, in that regard, what she said has come to pass, and, and, but it's really about this point uh, moving forward. I'm going to tell it, because remember, you and I had a conversation, what was it, 40 minutes or so, we were on the phone a Saturday morning a few weeks ago, right? and you expressed your reluctance to, to talk about all that you do and just to live it, to do it. But I told you then, I was going to tell it. <laughs> and people have no idea. Um, I'm telling you, all of you that are joining us in this conversation, you have no idea how this man has spent the last 30 years of his life, regardless of his own personal journey and ups and downs, but he has consistently followed that heart of his to give, to do, for those who are less fortunate. Uh, I, I'm not going to get into I don't want to embarrass him, embarrass him, but he is re the reason why Individuals have finished college, food has been distributed, on and on and on. And I love that about him. It's about doing the work. And the book of James says, blessed are those who don't just hear the word, but do the work. Well, let, let, me, add, let me add this to that. Okay. You, I remember coming home uh, into my mother's beauty shop, and I had had a small amount of success. And I said, Ma, did you ever think, you know, look at me. And she said, boy you don't know how many people been praying for you, <laughs> you know? So I have been prayed for and supported by uh, uh, many people, but specifically by my mother in those days, by my wife now and for a long time, you know? Uh, so I've been uh, protected. Uh, there's been a, a, a hedge around me, if you will, and, 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 and a legion of uh, a prayer prayers and, and, and people who pray for me. Well, I understand and appreciate that because when I was in the hospital with COVID-19, I appreciated it globally how many people were praying for me being that close to the edge. So I hear you. And, and you know what? I, I would think that that's some of the explanation, besides your own choices and your own perspective on life and worldview, but I think that's also some of what protected you from what happens in Hollywood? Here you are, your family, your wife, you're celebrating years of, of marriage. And, you know, every marriage goes through its changes. Mm. Uh, and I, we married for 50 years in, in 2022. And we had our ups and downs and our challenges. But we remain faithful to the covenant. Family still intact. And, and, and here you are in spite of you know, what happens in Hollywood to so many relationships that, that break down because of the success and because of the lifestyles that, that many live there. Well, uh, she left the room, but you, you, I can thank her. You know, Pauletta is, is, is largely responsible for that. And, and you know, we've, I don't know, what's it, we've just outlasted everybody else, you know? <laughs> we've just, 
I can't say how many years it's been because she's only 29. So Okay, I'll but, leave it right there. Yeah, you got to leave it right there. But uh, uh, speaking of which, she's walking in the room now. How many years we've been together, Paula? <laughs> see, see, now you're a wise man. You asked her instead of guessing the wrong you, number. You noticed you didn't hear anything, right? <laughs> oh, she said 43. We've been together 43 years? <laughs> And she just said, yes, sir, 43 years. There it is. You can bank on that, I'm sure. 43. Well, listen, your, 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 your son, John David, seems to be uh, leaning in the direction of, of his dad's uh, career. And I'm sure to have you as a role model, because we, we all need models. And, and the thing about it is fathers, we are imperfect models. Mm. And over time, our children see through our imperfection and see the value of what we did bring to the table. I'm sure that that makes you proud that he's even thinking of going in that, that direction. Yes? Well, you, you spoke with him the other day. Uh, 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 uh. And he's a very, very talented and a very spiritual young man. I, I, as I know, Pauletta, we're, we're, we're happy about his success, but we're, we're as equally as happy about the example he's setting for his brothers and, and, and his sisters uh, as a man of God and, and, and as obviously their sibling and just be an example for them and, and being unashamed of it. And uh, so I'm, 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 I'm happy about that. I know Pauletta is, Pauletta is as well. Well, you say you're happy, but I remember getting a call on a Sunday. Right. I was in a meeting with the police commissioner in New York City, right. and I get this call. It's you. And I said, okay, let me, let me see how my, my brother's doing, make sure he's okay. And you were pumped because he had experienced what you experienced in terms of encountering the Holy Spirit on a very deep level. And I will tell you, you know, that is an expression of what you value most. Right. A man as accomplished as you, but his son being filled with the Holy Spirit, his son experiencing that same power of God, that meant more to you than all the other stuff. Well, you know, there's an old saying, you never see a U-Haul behind a hearse. Amen. You, know, you can't take it with you. The Egyptians tried it. All they got was robbed. Mm -hmm. So I don't put the value in monetary and, and, and all of those things. You know, that what happened with one of our sons and that we pray happens for all of our children, that's, that's where it's at. I mean, I've tried everything else. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It doesn't, doesn't, doesn't pay off, for lack of a better word. You, and I won't even ask you the typical questions that interviews ask, and really this is a conversation. Uh, I love and respect you. Um, there have been times when we talk about what's most important, what's valuable, that you've been in church and you'll lean over and you'll share something with me, and it blows me away because I'm saying, here's a man that has accomplished so much and loved by people around the world of every class, ethnicity, race, culture, it doesn't matter. And yet he whispers in my ear a, a very important accomplishment to him that others would say, well, that's no big deal. But it again, it puts in light your priorities, what's really important to you in life. And some people then they'll have not gotten there. You know, it's still the external stuff, not the internal, that is most important to them. Well, the, you know, you still, you, you, you go through what you think is going to make you happy in hmm. search of what actually will make you happy. Yeah. And, yeah. and, and that's it. Each person's journey is, 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 is different. You know, we've been blessed with everything you can have materially, and, and that, what I've learned, doesn't doesn't do it you know we we we've been blessed with health we've been blessed with a, a, a loving family and beautiful children. the things that we've been blessed with are so simple and 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 and, and profound and, and and enduring you know the the money and the fame yeah i guess it's easier for me to say because i, I i've experienced it but it's uh but th but those are the important things for me and if there's anything COVID-19 has done, is show us how much we can live without. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, and, and you know, maybe, I dare say, a blessing in disguise. I, I know we have been forced to deal with each other. 
Yeah. You know, right. sit in the house and, and like, oh, you know, you know, so so I think it's a, a, a in that regard. I mean, we're not making light of obviously all the, the, the lives are, the, are lost and, and families that are 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 hurt. But uh, God is sending us a message. You know, and it's an, it's a fascinating uh, one two punch we've had so far. Right. This right. year, it's still June. Right. So Lord knows where we're headed, and only God knows where we're headed. So we we're being forced to deal with powers higher than ourselves, whether yeah. we like it or not. We we better open our eyes and look at the reality of what's going on. This is this Amen. Is not it's not a joke. The scripture says, be still and know that I'm God. And if Amen. anything, COVID has forced us to be still and listen in ways well, that we have not listened. I hope so. It makes a lot of us scramble more. <laughs> you know, we, yeah, yeah. Some some people be still and not just run around in circles and run into the wall and, and you know, exhaust themselves. But uh, we have to deal with it. It's dealing with us. Well, I will tell you, and I've been privileged to be invited into a pastoral space in your life. I, I, I appreciate that. I, I, I honor that and respect that space that you've allowed me to enter in your life and in your heart and in your family. Uh, and out of that, I say I'm proud of you, man, how you. you have navigated the man that you uh, have become and the fact that you are using your platforms unapologetically to identify with your faith, but to identify with wisdom and, and, and live a life, like I said, the good man who leaves an inheritance to his children's children, leaving not just material legacy, but spiritual inheritance, intellectual inheritance, emotional uh, and motivational inheritance by making better choices. And that means more than anything else in the world, man. So thank you for who you are, Denzel, and joining me uh, for this half an hour of conversation. I hope we can do it again in the future, and I hope you've been blessed by it. I know I'm just looking at all the comments. People need models that they can look up to in life to say that we're not the exception to the rule, but men like you and I are the rule. This is what be. I just want to be in that number when the saints go marching in. That's what I want. It, it, I, I don't care where I am in that number, in that line. It, it, I didn't say I want to be first, last, in the middle. I, 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 I know I, I won't be alone, but I, I want more than anything else in my life to be in that number. Amen, my brother. That's, now it's time for the benediction. <laughs> I'm gonna make the sign of the cross. <laughs> May the Lord hey, bless you. I love you, brother. Thank Thanks. you so much for joining in. And we'll talk again soon. All right? Thank you. All right. God bless. God bless.